All right, we are ready for the last part of step seven of our build process. And we're gonna bind the back. I marked the center line of my purfling. <clears throat> Put that out of the way. I've got my two pieces of walnut binding. I've got my config sheet right here, making sure that I'm doing the right thing on the right instrument. The waist is my registration point. I've got my center line from so long ago. I mark center and I mark the direction of the miter. Come in this way. Waist, register, work my finger around so it's accurate, doesn't bulge out. Center line, direction of my miter. Clippers. Clip off the excess. It's easier on the tools to clip or saw versus sand. Okay, my ears are going in briefly while I sand those miters. This way. Usually I leave that on. A little bit of this purfling that's on the bottom of this kind of curls up. I pull that off. Now I do my test fit. So what I'm looking for, you can, if you can see, that gap goes completely away and I'm checking like when I clamp it, looks perfect. All right. Now in between when you last saw us and now we've had an interesting thing happen. We used to use LMI, white instrument glue, and the formula was changed in that. And um, they let us know that, but meanwhile, they're looking at new formulas. The tried and true instrument glue, many people will tell you, is original Titemond. So that's what we're using. I've never used it up until recently. I just always had done the white instrument glue. They're very, very similar compositions, but I kind of like the tight bond better. Um, like I say, they're the same chemicals, basically, so they react the same way. They set up in the same amount of time, they both are repairable with heat. What I like about the tight bond is it's a little, just slightly thinner than the stuff we were using. I use a little bit less of it. I feel like it spreads out a little bit more evenly. All right, remember on the binding, look at how evenly I've got that glue spread out. Here we go. Start the 15 minute clock. I put this over the binding, the purfling, in place, center line. Now line up my miter. I'm looking down the end graft. Left hip is holding the instrument in place. Shifting it slightly so it's perfectly centered, if I can do it. I will say that this operation right now, binding the back, is um, one of the toughest because you're on the clock, that's part of it. I've told you before that the glue sets up, so you really want to get this in place and clamped within 15 minutes. But you'll see when I come around, I'm going to have to hand uh, cut the joint. I didn't have to do it at the top because now, there is no joint. The neck and dovetail are in the way. Anyway, so you can see, I think I've talked about this before, but I'm just working it little by little. Get the purfling in and in its channel. I'm looking for squeeze out. But in terms of clearing off glue and taping, I'm working three, four inches at a time. I want to make sure I get the part I'm working on where I want it before I think about working something else. I'm squeezing, you can probably see the white in my skin on my left finger. And that's because I'm pushing pretty hard right there, 
trying to really get it seated as much as I can in this channel. All right, coming around. All right, now we put a butt joint at the end of this binding and I'm having to get it really in place. I'm pressing with my finger because I want to make sure I've got it exact. And now I'm going to mark the center line right where I want that butt joint to be of the purfling and the binding. Use my clippers to clip the wood. No need to do that with the purfling. The reason is that with the purfling, I can chisel right through it. The wood, I have to nibble it a little bit. So I'm finding my pencil mark and cutting it. I bring that in place, and here's what I mean by nibbling. I am shaving off a few thousandths of an inch with each shave there. It's one of these weird things where you you got to work quickly, but not hastily. I don't know how to put it. You don't want to waste any time, but you also want to take your time and not ruin it. So, so there you have it. All right, same thing on the other side. We're almost done here. Char's going to be happy because she's tired of taping this morning. We're going to go visit Henry in the hospital today. That's pretty cool. We get to meet him. We get to meet little Henry. Yeah. Hey, it'd be kind of cool if people like didn't take the last names of their parents and Henry could be like Henry Mayamoe. Yeah. All right. So I got the glue in the two channels there. A little bit of glue on this binding. Maybe Henry can learn how to bind. Henry will be our binding expert? Mm -hmm. I like binding. I don't want Henry to take over. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to look and make sure I really get that miter seated. And I'm pushing with my right finger. I, I was pushing that binding in place. And that's why I've got a good overlap. And I'm going to come in there and clamp that when we're all done. And that's just really going to seat it. And I want to be careful here that I somehow don't pull that binding out of the miter. Kind of hard to do, but if you work it too hard, it is what'll happen. really want to try to get that seated nicely in the waist. I'm going to come in and clamp that too, but I like it in there with the tape as well as I can possibly get it. Now come in here around the upper bout. One last piece of tape before I chisel. Pencil. Mark at the overlap. Got my marks. Cut the excess wood very close to that mark. 
cut my purfling. I'm going to check my purfling now. Perfect fit. Pencil marks are bigger than you think. You'd think, oh, I just cut to the pencil and I'm going to be fine. But they're really big. See me nibbling. All right, now I'm going to push this in place. I need to take a little more off. Always best that I take less and work my way in. There's time. That's going to be a perfect fit. A little bit extra glue. You notice when I put glue in the channel, I did not go all the way to the end there, and it's because I don't want to get that glue on my chisels. So I just put a little bit of extra in right at the end. Can you see that butt joint there? Like it's. I'm, really good. I'm pleased with that one. I will say that it's just, like I say, it's one of the most nerve-wracking things. It doesn't always come out perfectly. It just doesn't. So, in with a the clamp there at the waist. Now, clamp to get my miter at this end, and I've got to get each side of my shoulder. goes down a little to get myself a little bit more bite with my clamps. You saw maybe when I did that, I don't know if you're where Char was focused, but see that little bit of squeeze out there? That's good. Shows that I'm getting in there. That clamp, that looks good. Take this tape off. I just want to see how I did. I, I like to, you know, this is where that binding is coming around to the flat at the neck. And uh, so there's the end of a bend. I want to get that as good as I can. All right, now I'm just going to check for areas that are proud. A little bit of proud is good because I'm going to sand it back, but I might have to clamp an area that's, that's uh, not you know, that's not sucked in as well as I want. <laughs> There's time to do that. In this case, it all feels really good. All right, you know what we're doing now, right? I shop. Camera, action, take off. This is the end of step seven. Use the photo, QR code, 1527, I just like to see. It's never made a mistake, but dash seven. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, it uploaded good. We're done. And now I just put it away up here. We'll be back at you with step eight soon. Thanks for watching.